Hi there, author Melissa May Younger here, and I'm going to talk to you about writing a book description for your book on Amazon. When you're setting out to write your book description, you want to look at other book descriptions on Amazon of books specifically in your category that are doing well and that are indie published because those people have really figured out how to sell their book with the description because they don't have the benefit of a big publishing company that's going to be doing all this advertising for them. And then I would say that you, what you want to do is you want to judge the good and the bad on those descriptions and you want to copy the good and then you want to avoid the bad. So let's take a look at a couple examples so that you can see what I'm talking about and then let's write a book description together. Okay, so here's the first one we're going to look at. It's called The Secret Lake. It's a children's mystery adventure. And as you can see, she's sold quite a lot of books and she's gotten great ratings overall. And she is independently published. She actually owns, this lady owns her own independent publishing company. And if you look at the description of her book, there's a couple of things I want you to notice. So first of all, she's put a subtitle here that is actually not on the book. The Secret Lake, A Children's Mystery Adventure. That's pretty smart because that lets people know right up front what the secret lake is, right? If she just had the secret lake there, no one would know it was a children's book. They wouldn't know it's a mystery and they wouldn't know it. And it's an adventure. So if someone's looking for this type of book, they're going to be able to easily find it. Then if you look at her first sentence, okay, the first sentence is supposed to hook the reader in. It's wise to put it in bold so that you tell people to pay attention to it. However, hers is three sentences and they're not particularly engaging, I would say. So this looks like something that she added in later on because it says now enjoyed by thousands of young readers. So my guess is this was not her original first sentence, but a lost dog, a hidden time tunnel and a secret lake, that's not even a sentence. So actually like that's, that's not very good because you want it to be a complete sentence. <laughs> and while those things could be interesting, there's not really like, there's not a connection being made between them, right? So full sentence would kind of, flesh that out so that you're giving someone a little bit better idea of what the book is about, like right from your first sentence, okay? A page turning time travel adventure. Okay, so it's a time travel adventure, right? So she could have probably condensed these two sentences into one, a page turning time travel adventure. And then you probably don't need to say the ages of the children in your first sentence. That's probably something that should go later in the description. Also, uh, down here, it usually has the reading age already identified for people. And chances are they're looking for books by reading age. So that's not really necessary to put up here. She should have just condensed it and said a, a page turning time travel adventure about a lost dog, a hidden time tunnel, and a secret lake. That would have given people a much better idea of what the book is about in a more concise format. Now enjoyed by thousands of young readers should come later in the description. When Stella and her younger brother Tom move to their new London home, they become mystified by the disappearances of Harry, their elderly neighbor's small dog. That's a very long sentence, and by the time your reader gets to the end of it, they might be looking back at the beginning of the sentence to figure out, wait, who are the characters and what are they mystified about? <laughs> so you want to keep the sentences as short as possible. Okay, then she says, where does he go and why does he keep reappearing wet through? So these are questions about the small dog. So that could be interesting. Okay, here's the more interesting mystery, which I feel that she should have put sooner in the description. Who is the boy rowing toward them who looks so terrified? And whose are those children's voices carried on the wind from beyond the woods? 
that's a lot more interesting than a wet dog. I'm, I'm sorry, Karen, your book is selling incredibly well. So you've obviously done something right here. Um, Stella and Tom soon discover that they have traveled back in time to their home and its garden almost 100 years earlier. Here they make both friends and enemies and uncover startling connections between the past and present. So she's done a good job of communicating what her story is about. She's basically told you the whole plot, but she hasn't given away everything, right? She's left some things to your imagination. And then it says a modern children's classic. So she, what she's saying is she wants you to think of her book in terms of children's classics. And then she mentions some children's classics it's like. And so she's comparing it to all these other books that people will be, people probably have already read, um, will already know like what that category is about. And then let's look at the back cover description real quick. Okay, a lost dog, a hidden time tunnel, and a secret lake takes Stella and Tom to their home and the children living there 100 years in the past. Here, they make both friends and enemies and uncover startling connections with the present. So that's good because it, it tells you some of what the, what the mystery is, it like solves that for you. But then it also says there's startling connections with the present. So you're, you're curious about what those are. Now, her book, I don't know if it's sold in bookstores because it's independently published. Um, but if it is, you know, this is a decent back cover book description. It's not too long. It conveys what the book is about. Um, if anything, I would say she could have left maybe a little bit more of a mystery open and not explained as much. So this one is more of like a memoir biography of this guy. It's called The 29th day surviving a grizzly attack in the Canadian tundra. He's got a nice subtitle that tells you exactly what the book is about, surviving a grizzly attack in the Canadian tundra. And then I would say, you know, this type of stuff should go further down in the description because I don't think that people are going to look at this and just because it's a bestseller, there's so many bestsellers out there, right? Ooh, it's a bestseller. I better buy that. I mean, maybe some people do that, but I think that should go a little bit further down in the description and that you should start with something that's a little punchy and grab the reader's attention. Now, this first sentence, a 600 mile canoe trip in the Canadian wilderness is a 17 year old's dream adventure, but after he is mauled by a grizzly bear, it's about staying alive. So, this is good in that it's informative. It's bad in that it is too long. There are too many elements going on in here. They need to simplify. They should have edited this. Okay, so you probably don't need to say that it's a 600 mile canoe trip. Okay, the real thing that we're after here is getting mauled by a grizzly bear, right? So you could just mention that he's in the wilderness and that he's mauled, in a grizzly bear, mauled by a grizzly bear, and now he has to try to stay alive. So I think you could just take out that first part. You can mention that further down in the description, but that's not the most compelling element about the book, right? Uh, people are going to read this book because it's about being mauled by a grizzly bear. So then this says this true life wilderness survival epic recounts 17 year old Alex Messenger's near lethal encounter with a grizzly bear during a canoe trip in the Canadian tundra. Okay, again, so he's mentioning the canoe trip in the Canadian tundra down here. That does not need to be mentioned in the first sentence. You don't need to say things more than once. You want to keep it as short as possible because someone's just going to glance at it and move on to the next book. The story follows Alex and his five companions as they paddle north through harrowing rapids and stunning terrain. 29 days into the trip, while out hiking alone, Alex is attacked by a barren ground grizzly. 
Left for dead, he wakes to find that a summer adventure has become a struggle to stay alive. Over the next hours and days, Alex and his companions tend his wounds and use their resilience, ingenuity, and dogged perseverance to reach help at a remote village a thousand miles north of the U.S.-Canadian border. I think that he could have left out a few of those details. So you put the interesting stuff in there. And then, you know, I think he could have played up a little bit more about, you know, how he survived and maybe what the stakes are. <laughs> if you say something like, no, no way to contact other human beings and that sort of thing. Because because I'm thinking, you know, well, why don't they just call someone on their cell phone, right? And Or get within range of somebody and just call someone on their cell phone and get help, you know, get him airlifted out of there or something. But obviously it's selling very well, probably because of the content is compelling. So let's look at this last one in Inconvenient History, Japan's Dark Shadow on Asia. All right, so here we go. We got, um, we have a subtitle here. I, that should probably be the main title. I'm just gonna throw that out there because an inconvenient history could be an inconvenient history about anything. So that's a very general title and it looks like this is actually a very specific history book. Uh, so maybe an inconvenient, maybe they should have switched them. I said Japan's Dark Shadow in Asia and then the subtitle is An Inconvenient History. Now, if you look at this description, what's the first thing you notice? It's one giant block of text, something you don't wanna do. Because what that does is like readers don't wanna read this huge chunk of text. They might read the first sentence or two, but to make it through that whole text, it looks intimidating. Um, it's also, it's also, as you read it, you'll see that the language is a little bit more on the formal and academic side. I get it that it's a history book. He is, should still grab the reader's attention and tell them very concisely what the book is about in an interesting way. So the first sentence, Japan was the first non-Western country to achieve a high level of modernization during the late 19th century and early 20th century. Boring. So unless you are really into Japan and history, then you are probably going to stop reading right about there and move on to the next book. Okay. This does, you know, obviously has sold and has fairly good ratings. So I'm not trying to hate. I'm just saying, you know, this, this descri book description could be improved. Um, based on this, Japan increased. So based on this, you never want to do that either. Because now, what does the reader have to do? Now they have to go back and read the previous sentence all over again. Like, what, what did I just read? Because that's going to be the basis for what's coming next. So now I have to read that long sentence over again. Japan was the first non-Western country to achieve a high level of modernization during the late 19th century and early 20th century. So based on that... Japan increased its national power by invading, colonizing, and occupying Asian countries. Such events at, at the time were considered as a light for Japan, but it was a huge tragedy and a dark shadow cast over Asian countries. And phrases like at the time, you don't need them in there, just trim them out. So make these sentences as short and as readable as possible. And then after the war, Japan did not put an effort to change such shadows into light. How about instead of saying put an effort, say try. Put it in the simplest language possible because even if you have academics that are reading this, it's better to have a description that's reader friendly. It gives, it does certainly gives you an idea of what the book is about. What they could have done is write it in kind of more of a storytelling way. The story of the history of Japan. And it actually sounds like it's a really interesting, compelling story, but it's just not being presented here in the most interesting and compelling way. I'm going to show you how I write my book description. So I like to start by putting down any words and phrases that are going to help me remember what the book, the main points of the book are. So you wanna mention any main characters. So Mari, Janine, 
and Bobby Wells. Those are my main characters. And then they are traveling to the magical land of Eridu. They're not just traveling there, they're returning there because they went there in the first book. And what do they do in this second book? They have a mission to recover the magical scroll um, to fight the impending darkness in the kingdom. And then they're gonna be accompanied by new friends and old foes. So that's basically what the book is about. Um, the main, and then other main characters are Prince and Numatos, and then they are on a mission for the king. So make them into sentences, then I can move them around, and then I can play with the wording of them a little bit. So I'll say when Mari, Janine, and Bobby Wells return to the... I'll say mythical land of Eridu, they are given a mission to recover King's, it's his, it's his scroll, the King's magic scroll, to fight the impending darkness in his kingdom. Accompanied by new friends and old foes, they must face danger and co overcome obstacles. I'll say, I'll just say as they <laughs> go on their epic journey. And then I might say guided by Prince and Numatos. They are sure they cannot fail. Yet, when new enemies, even greater power, threaten their mission, they worry that they will fail the king. Will Eridu be consumed by the darkness? And how many can be saved before they are swallowed up completely? Okay, so this is just really rough, right? Um, this is me in the process of writing and to be honest, I go over it many times and I like to take a break and then come back into it and reword things, play with things, okay? Um, but I'm gonna, like I was saying before, as I was looking at other descriptions, I'm following my own advice here to um, start with a powerful sentence that's gonna tell them exactly what the book is about. And I need to make this a shorter sentence because it's too long. Okay, so when they return to the mythical land of Eridu, they are given a mission. I'll just say they are given an important mission. And I'll say they must recover the king's magical scroll to fight the impending darkness in his kingdom. Okay. Um, so basically what I'm saying with this first sentence is that this is about these children and that it's a mythical land. You have about 4,000 words on Amazon to use. So you can do a longer description, but to be honest, people are going to often stop reading after the first few paragraphs. 
So you, you really only have a short amount of time to really hook them in. And then if it's necessary to add more information, you can do that down below. What you could do, if you have a series like I do, I'll probably mention the first book down below in the description. And I'll say like this is the second book in the adventures in Eridu. And I'll say read land in the woods first. Okay, I want them, I want readers to read the land in the woods first because they're gonna understand things in the second book a lot better. I tried to make it so that if someone hadn't read the first book, they could kind of jump into the second, but the kids mention a lot about when they were there the first time. So we'll see. Now, when you're writing the back cover blurb, that's a hundred words or less. You do not have a lot of space there, okay? 100 words run out very quickly. So let's see how long this, this is right here. That's 104 right there. So I would need to put less than that on the back of the book. And like you might've seen with the other children's book I was showing you, you can just put like three sentences to tell someone about the book. My book, at least right now, is not going to be sold in bookstores. So I don't worry too much about the back cover description. Um, I, and I'm just gonna put a main, the main plot points. So I'll say, Mari, Janine, and Bobby Wells return to Eridu only to find the land has continued to be consumed by darkness. Now they must journey across land and sea with a large company to bring back the scroll magic scroll. Will they be able to help restore light to the land? Okay, so that's their main mission there. That this is this is what the story is about. It's easier for me, it's a children's book. I'm not gonna get too complicated in my plots there. Um, if you have a very complicated plot I would say just make sure that you convey the main plot. Don't focus on all the subplots that you're putting in there. So I hope that, that this video was helpful to you in creating your own book description on Amazon. If you like videos like these about, I'm talking about my writing and my publishing and that sort of thing and how I do things and think about things. Um, to, and I'm gonna share you know, tips and advice then uh, please like this video, please subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments if there's something in particular about writing or publishing that you're interested to know more about uh, because I might, have, I might have knowledge and experience in that area that I could share with you and I would love to do so.